Hello to all my friends out there in YouTube land. It is your good buddy, Phil Tastic Phil here, and Hi. my wife, my beautiful wife. And welcome back to another episode of Mail Call Mondays. We're not filming this on a Monday, though. Yes. It's Saturday, so we're actually <sighs> filming a message to the future. We usually do Sundays, don't we? No, we usually do it after the live show. Oh. What do you think people are... Uh, what do you think the future's gonna be like? What do you think people are gonna be driving when they see this? Flying cars. You think we're gonna have flying cars in two days? No. Who knows? None. What do you days. think, buddy? As you might hear, he's up from his nap. The often heard but seldom seen MT. And uh, we're opening up. I started already. This is from that same. Um, eBay seller with the... Reggie, because it was no. packed like his... No, it wasn't. Reggie packs like a pro. No, it's like that same concept. Well, it's no, this is, this is the basic kind of thing yeah. is that you want to think. This guy actually was nice enough to put a pull tab. I'll show you how that works. And I have to give him props for this. Where so it? it says pull tab on back. Huh. So this was the same guy that I got that older... X-Men book from a few weeks oh, yeah, ago. I remember that. So he gave me a couple deals. This is another X-Men book, I can tell you that much. We've, we've had a very X-Men... Yeah, you have a huge collection of X-Men. We've had a very X-Men-centric day yeah. today. I yeah. have to say this. We did the, the Top 5 Live on this show. Yeah. Um, I kind of like Top 5 Live. Maybe I should do that more often, but yeah, different... It kind of goes well together. It's a good rhyme. Yeah, we got to think of other Top 5s, I suppose. Maybe we'll do and that. the top five you selected were pretty good. No, but like that was like top five keys, so we have to pick a different top five every month or so. Yeah. So see, we're thinking of an idea. We're live, but this is recorded, so I don't know if you could say live on camera. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're considered live. Yeah. So again, you flip to the back, and he's got an arrow, which is very nice. Point two. Like this is a pull tab, so you could just wow, pull it off that's rather so than convenient. cut it open. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Here. This is what we're going to do, honey. You ready? Now, you got to do it slower. This is a golf clap. You know, it was a little bit more sophisticated. I'm glad that you see this, buddy. My son's <laughs> across the, the way. I'm glad that you see this so that you know. Look, when you want it, you could use this special clap. And he's just learning to clap. So this is important to show him now. He claps. You, I, but he's just learning. He's been doing it for a while now, though. He's a year old. It's not, you know, a while for him. Yes, buddy. So you use this clap when it's you're blown away, when there's a mark of sophistication or, very important, or to be sarcastic. You ready? It's like this. This is called the golf clap. Okay? I hope you're taking notes. We're going to quiz you. <laughs> so... Pull tabs, very much appreciated, sir. I have to get into doing pull tabs more, people tell me. But it's probably easy to mimic, but it's just basically... Well, yeah, it's, he folded over tape, it's, yeah. not, it's not difficult. That's really neat, that's a good thought. Never thought of that. I wish the old boxes were like that. I wonder if people, well, you don't really want that, though, never mind. Because people can open them. Okay, so, as I said, Oh, I was going to say, he's put two things in here? No, he just took very good precautions with packing it. Okay. There's another note on the other side of that. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Is there just one comic in there? Yes, and I'll show you what he's done. See, this is good. I could educate my wife about protecting it. So in addition to putting... The... You have a lot of um, boards that are... Trash. You can do yeah, that I've been you're... using them to take notes. I've been yeah. recycling. I, if you missed the live show today, no, I'm saying when you're shipping it, we're doing the two year. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing the, and I'm not being curt by saying that. I'm just showing you. We're doing the two year, 200 subscriber giveaway, and I did a little bit of a scorecard. I used an old board that we're not using. This one's. But you a said you need to update. Discolored. Yes, thank you. Yes. And I haven't done it yet because we've. Saturdays are marathon days for me. Not literal marathons, because, I mean, come on. In a good way. I'm not a runner. 
Maybe, maybe I'm more of a dancer than a runner. What do you say, honey? You're not meant to dance. Slow dance, yes, but... Well, it's my wife. Yeah. Of course. It's called slick. <laughs> Take notes, boys and girls. Okay, so... And these are... I could recycle these boards as well. Oh, great. No, it's good. You know, why... If we have a use for them. So again, this is an older X-Men book. I think this is actually one of the ones Elon was talking about, so that's good. If he ever messages me, I can let him know. Yeah, if you're in the Seattle area, um, I know there's a couple people in the Seattle area. Um, Bronze Age comic nerd who's got a big following. I don't think he watches my stuff, but he's right near there. Um, and Nauman was there, I think, on business, though. I don't know if he's still there now. Um, Mighty Moose Comics in the Factoria Mall. Never been near... Seattle, but I will forever remember the Factoria Mall because of Elon. Uh, just got a Bronze Age collection in that's got some really good stuff in it. Not a Bronze Age, I'm sorry, a Silver Age collection. So, and a fresh bag and board, which I appreciate so much. Very cool. This is X-Men number 44. This is, this is kind of strange how they're doing it. It says the X-Men, because it's the main book, featuring the angel. That was Archangel before he became Archangel, was just Angel. Well, if it's number 44, if they were printed... Excuse me, pal. You, we're a little bit busy here, you okay? If they were printed once monthly, which I'm not quite sure if they were at that point, and the first X-Men book was in 1963... <laughs> It's almost four years later, so you're talking 1967-ish. Wow. Um, yeah, so here they, I guess just to again show you how the structure of a cover was different. You know, it's kind of strange. The title itself is not the main focus, it's the character. Whereas nowadays you'd have X-Men and then featuring the angel, maybe in smaller print. I really like the vibrancy of it, the dark purple against the reds and then you had angel and yellow and white i thought it was dull it wasn't really vibrant no? the reds dull the red is vibrant but the other colors are pretty well cool. that's the point is that you have the dark and then you have the vibrant so the vibrant as i'm trying to avoid the glare of our windows here so that the vibrancy is that much more vibrant because you're comparing it to the dark well, just kind of unfocus your eyes. Look it's at not it. Complimentary. What? But what? What stands out when you're looking at it? The red. The red, right? It draws your attention. Right. The yellows. But then the purple kind of takes me away from it. How does the purple take you away? It if just, anything, it, it makes your eye go, go to it. It's not complimentary colors, you know. It just doesn't go well. Well, you don't want complimentary because then your eye's going to go all over the place. So this lets you focus Why is it on complimentary? like something that's going to maybe compliment. Like a black background would have been like a little bit more no pronounced. that would have that would have made it starker if anything and then you also i think with the black you would have lost the machinery no it would in have the background. made it stand out more no it would have made the red stand out but you would have lost these elements is what i'm saying the the grays here and then on the ground here you've got angel again i'm trying to just adjust it for the thing if the background were black i think it would have brought all the focus to angel and the fact that the I'll agree, it is a weird composition. Yeah. Where there's the center is here. Like I nowadays I think that you would have seen a comic where Angel would have been more in the foreground, would have been more the focus rather. Um right now the focus is kind of lost around here, in yeah. my opinion. And this was the first and I don't know why it was a big deal. Everything I've seen it says this is the first appearance of Red Raven. This character, whom I've never heard of and haven't heard of since. How is the interior? Can we check the interior? Yeah, I mean, is it's... Is it, like, really old-style drawing? It's got to be the style drawing. I mean, yeah, I'll show you on the Marvel like app. newspaper, probably. Yeah, I mean, the pages themselves are very yellow. Yeah, I see that. I'd rather not open it. I could show you on the, on the Unlimited app. The iPad's charging at the moment. So I'll show that to you later. Maybe we'll update later. I don't know. Um, but... I'm trying to think, is this one, was Kirby still drawing X-Men during the time? You good, pal? <laughs> I think he's going. Yes. Uh, oh, 
was wiping his eyes already. He haven't been up that long. Hey Google, what was the last issue of Uncanny X Men that Jack Kirby drew? Why does Google, what's the point of Google? Every time we ask, <laughs> sorry, I don't know. Oh, did you mean this? It's not everything. Let me try, let me try this. Hey Google, what's the last issue of X-Men that Kirby drew? Sorry, I don't have any information about that. Hey Google, what information do you have on Jack Kirby? On the website Britannica.com, they say Jack Kirby, original name Jacob Kurtzberg, American comic book artist who helped create hundreds of original characters, including Captain America, the Incredible Hulk, and the Fantastic Four. See, so we turned into we turned the opening into what does Google know and not know? Um, how about this? Hey Google, who was the artist on X Men issue nineteen issue forty four? Sorry, I don't have. I may have screwed that one up. Yeah. Hey Google, who drew X Men number forty four? Sorry, I don't have any information about that. Hey Google, what do you know? Here's what you told me. First, my wife Irene is the best. Second, my wife is the most beautiful woman in the world. Third, my wife is the most beautiful woman in the world. See? Google's Google's redeeming themselves. Yay! I think that's a good spot to end. Any? Yeah. Any? So what are yeah. your what are your thoughts in general? I mean, based off on the cover, it's not my favorite. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Don't um, lie. Who's there, telling you to lie? There's a lot going on. It's very busy. I don't like the color scheme. To be honest with you. What do you like? How about that? I like the red, like is drawing you to the character. That's good. Are you familiar with Angel? No, I don't know. He was in one of the. He was in one of the movies that you didn't see, the terrible Lennox That's 3. That's probably why I'm not familiar. You saw Archangel in the Apocalypse movie. Yeah. That's him. Oh. Apo well, then. Basically, I'll give you a little bit of history. So, Angel, the guy with the wings there, mm -hmm. Warren Worthington III, which is like the most stuck-up name, I think, in comics, in my opinion. Um, founding member of the X-Men, other than his powers was he could fly. He used to carry a bazooka. I don't know when they got rid of that. Um... During the 80s, I believe, there was a... You're bored already, pal? <laughs> there was a storyline called The Mutant Massacre where Mr. Sinister, for reasons unknown, attacked the Morlocks, who are these mutants who are too ugly <laughs> at this time to live on the surface, so they hide in the sewers. Right. Uh, it was later revealed that Gambit was hired by Mr. Sinister to lead, lead him to the Morlocks before he was an X-Men. Um, the X-Men went to intervene in the process. Buddy! <laughs> in the process, Angel's wings were destroyed. Uh, Angel, of course, was very upset, you know, and that had to hurt. So he was taken in by Apocalypse, who gave him metal wings, but also in the process turned him into Archangel, or his horseman, because he has four horsemen every years of death. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's interesting now in the 2020s, and actually they started it in the 2010s, is that um, he at one point regrew his natural wings, but um, death is still a mind control inside of his brain, so... Uh, more so during the um, 2000s X-Force run, which was like a, a strike team, uh, he would kind of lose control and turn into Archangel. Mm. Interesting kind of dichotomy. How would you like that little slice of history? Very interesting. On that note, uh, I'm going to say peace, love, and comics. How about you, honey? Anything thank you to say? for watching. She says thank you. Buddy, since you spoke through most of the video, do you have anything else to say to the people? <laughs> <laughs> Is that cool? All right. Later.